Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let's see all about crystal oscillator. Guys, as we have discussed about almost four different types of oscillators up to now. So among them, the most important will be Hartley and Colpitts in our daily use. So in Hartley and Colpitts oscillator, we have found that tank circuit parameters determine the frequency of the oscillator. Yes, guys, we used the tank circuit, right, which has the inductors and capacitors. So such parameter values can be changed with time, climate and, temp and temperature fluctuations. So that is going to be a drawback of Hartley and Colpitts. Okay. Therefore, the frequency of oscillation, oscillation does not remain constant for high frequency stability. LC oscillators are therefore unsustainable. So they are not used prop. They do not have constant consistency, guys. So they will be. They will not be used. So to restore that method in a natural way. Crystals like quartz are relatively constant when better compared with the LC type guys. So for high frequency stability a crystal is employed as a frequency determiner determining element in an oscillator. Such oscillators are preferred to be crystal oscillator guys. So the crystal oscillators are basically a tuned circuit oscillators using piezoelectric crystal as a resonance tanking circuit okay guys so the crystal usually quartz that's what we have to, that i have told you has the greatest stability in holding constant at whatever frequency the crystal is organized organized sorry originally cut to operate it is particularly designed or cut into a particular shape to organize this stuff only so the crystal oscillator as used Whenever greater stability is required, for example, communication, transmitters and receivers. The principle of crystal oscillator depends on piezoelectric effect. So, basically, these consist of a small thing like this, guys. Like the crystal is placed in between of two capacitors like this. Okay, the, let us take this as our crystals, crystal oscillator circuit. So, this is a bit complex in drawing, guys. I'm saying you fry up I'm saying you clearly it's really a tough diagram to draw okay so basically 180 degrees phase shift is produced by the transistor and the other 180 is produced by the capacity voltages and everything in that circuit there are many things in that circuit guys there is an inductor resistor capacitor oh my god it's a big circuit okay so basically this is nothing but this guys internally internally the crystal is placed in between of two parallel metal plates or we can call it as a capacitor guys so this internal circuit will be something like this so it will be having a capacitor inductor resistor capacitor okay so if you observe these carefully guys you should observe them really really carefully okay Okay, so we'll be assuming that inductance of this is equals to inductance of this capacitor. So we will be comparing them. So XL is nothing but W into L. XC is nothing but 1 by WC. So we'll be sending W this side, C also this side. So W square LC is equals to 1. W is equals to 1 by under root LC. So we have got this. So as we all know, W is equals to 2 pi F. F is equals to 1 by 2 pi under root LC. So now I hope everyone got a small idea on frequency. So further moving on to the parallel thing. So parallel thing is nothing but XL plus XC is equals to XCM. So now we are doing for these three. These three. Previously we done for L and C. Now for these three. So this is what we get when we substitute it in it. WL minus 1 by WC is equals to 1 by WCM. So W square L is equals to C plus CM into, sorry, by C into CM. So F is nothing but 1 by 2 pi under root C plus C2, sorry, C plus CM by C into CM into L. So this will be the conclusion of crystal oscillator. So in the next video, we'll be going through some advantages and disadvantages of each and every oscillator which we have discussed up to now. Okay, thank you. Thanks for watching.